All right, so let's talk about the crystallographic planes. Um, in the first part of the series, we first identify crystals. What is a crystal structure and what is a unit cell? In the second part of this uh, lecture series, uh, crystal structure lecture series, um, we identified the crystallographic directions in a given unit cell. Now we'll be talking about the planes in those cells, especially with the atomic stacking in them. Why is that important? Of course, um, to determine a crystal structure, uh, as you remember, there was like layers stacking uh, at a certain order, stacking order. And depending on the atomic sizes, not only the stacking order, even if they have the two systems have the same stacking order, they might have a different uh, interplanar uh, spacing between those stacked uh, atomic layers. And and the, the basics of it in a unit cell, we can define those infinite uh, planes uh, confined in a unit cell. And we can uh, discuss the crystal structure and the uh, uh, plane spacing uh, based on a unit cell. It's important to determine that. We'll see that in the upcoming defects lecture and uh, characterization lecture in more detail. Uh, well, certain uh, materials, specifically metals, are plastically deformable. We discussed that. And the reason for that is the presence of mostly dense packed plane and direction combinations, so which we call the slip systems, uh, where our defects, also present in, in metals, are easily glide through uh, those systems. Uh, that plastic deformation, uh, the extent of it, is determined by how many uh, slip systems do I have in a given system. In other words, how many mostly dense packed planes do I have? So to define the mostly dense packed planes, I need to be able to identify what planes out there and how the atoms are stacked uh, on those planes. Or, for example, transport properties. Uh, through certain planes, I have better thermal conductivity, better uh, electrical conductivity. So to understand a lot of the material properties, uh, we'll go and discuss the uh, planar orientation uh, after um, determining the crystal structure of the uh, material and within that crystal structure unit cell which planes I'm doing the thermal mechanical or um, electrical uh, work okay so what is a crystallographic plane of course a plane is infinite uh, in two dimension normally but since we will be talking about a certain um, crystal structure such as for example a cube, right? If I draw a cube here, all equal sides. So this specific plane, which is indeed going in infinity in A and B, X and Y uh, directions, is confined in a unicell top plane. Or similarly, this plane, only the amount that is confined in a, a certain crystal structure is also uh, talked about in a unit cell. So whatever is the, the, the plane that you're seeing here, we're going to confine it into the unit cell uh, with the unit uh, dimensions, specifically for cube and hexagonal structures, and we will try to identify their Miller indices. If you remember the indices in the case of a, a direction, it was a, pointed out as U, V, W, right? And it was the square bracket for the specific direction. In the case of a plane, as soon as we identify the plane, we're going to define the indices as H, K, L. Uh, H belonging to X, K belonging to Y, L belonging to Z. Um, values okay all right so um after we define these uh, miller indices in the case of uh the the directions if you remember the family of directions was uh, shown in 
a triangular bracket. And if I define a family of planes, I will be defining that in curly bracket. Okay, that's the notation. How do we determine a certain specific plane in a given unit cell? First of all, uh, specifically if the plane looks like this in this example. In other words, it is passing through the origin that we picked as a three axis system here, XYZ system, there is this uh, O origin, and this plane is passing through the origin. First thing you need to do is to move the origins to the next uh, next corner. So, or you move the plane to the next corner, and the next unit cell. Why? Because in reality, in real life, this unit cell is repeating itself in XYZ dimensions, so there's no uh, worry uh, when we move the axis the system xyz axis system to the next door this is exactly what we do after we do move the xyz axis then my plane is no longer passing to the origin my origin is carried out here right now i need to see where does this um, plane intersecting with my coordinate system. If this is y, this is negative y, right? And so like a negative x and negative z. This direction, uh, x, y, z directions, where does the plane intersect with my directions? In the case of uh, x, it is not intersecting, it is parallel to it. So if it's parallel to it, it is intersecting at infinity, right? What about the intersection of that plane with y? Well, before I moved it away from the origin, the plane, it was not so easy to see, but now it's clearly seen that this plane is intersecting with my negative y at uh, units one, like a one unit length uh, position right here. So it is intersecting with y at negative one. What about with z? With z, it looks like it's half the um, uh, height of that uh, total uh, z height. So it is intersecting with my z at 1 over 2. Be careful. You don't do the integer thing here. You do take the complete reciprocal of these intersection points. In other words, to find the hkl, we need to do 1 over infinity, 1 over minus 1, 1 over 1 over 2. So that gives me 0, minus 1, 2. And then what do I do? I write down my plane is 0, 1 bar, 2. Don't forget to take the reciprocal of the intersections. Why we take it uh, the reciprocal, I'll show you when we're talking about the distance between the planes. Okay? So normally, uh, all those planes are parallel to each other. Why? Uh, as soon as I have this uh, specific plane given in this uh, cube, I have another consequent cube in the z direction, and that, z, that cube, unit cube, unit cell, also have the same plane. And so is the next unit cell, so is the next unit cell. So there are multiples of planes coming one after another in x, y, and z direction. So whatever the plane you pick, even if you pick a plane that is uh, going through the center or that is intersecting with all x, y, z um, uh, axis at unit length, they all have a parallel plane to them. Don't forget, if you uh, add up these unit cells one after another, you'll easily see those planes also in three dimension have the same exact plane. So these planes are actually an infinite length, an infinite area. Uh, we're just confining them at a specific unit cell when we talk about a specific single unit cell. But at reality is there are uh, many, they are infinite in area and also there are parallel planes uh, in the neighboring unit cells. Okay, so another important uh, um, fact that I want to remind you here, if I have a certain Miller indices 
um, plane, HKL. Well, in this case, for example, this blue uh, plane, what is that plane? Let's find it. If it's intersecting with X, no. It is parallel to all this X, Y plane, right? It is parallel to it. So there is no component, no intersection of that plane in X, neither Y. Where does this uh, plane intersect with Z? At point 1, right? The unit's uh, point 1. So instead of writing 0, I should have said infinity. Why? Because they are parallel. When it's parallel, they intersect at infinity. Then what do we do to convert that into HKL? We take the reciprocal. 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity, and 1 over 1. And that gives me 0, 0, 1 plane. Perfect. What if I took the same Miller indices and draw the vector of it? In the case of a vector coming from the origin, it doesn't have any component in x, it doesn't have any component in y, it only has a unit length in z from the origin, that's my vector. So this is my vector, right? If that's my vector and if that is my plane, it is obvious from this discussion, same indices, uh, planes and directions, it doesn't matter what is the index, are perpendicular to each other always. We can test the same thing for the next example. For example, this specific plane here. Uh, what is its intersection with x, y, and z? It is intersecting with x at 1. It is intersecting with y at 1. It never intersects with z. It's parallel. It intersects at infinity indeed. So what is my hkl values for this specific example? 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over infinity. Do not get lazy on that. Please uh, always take the reciprocal, and if you're coming from the other end, if you know the indices, again take the reciprocal to find the intersection points, right? We'll do the example of that as well. So 1, 1, 0 is my play. What about the 1, 1, 0 uh, vector? So if I was to draw the vector, what does this vector tell me in a 1, 1, 0? You have to go in one uh, x direction, one unit, in y direction, one unit, and it doesn't have a component in, zero, uh, in z. So let's do that. I'm going one unit here, and then one unit in, one unit in here, and one unit in this direction. So what is my vector? Starting from origin, ending right at that travel destination point. So that's my vector here, right? Look at my vector and look at my plane. They are perpendicular to each other. The same story, uh, if we have the, uh, these kind of planes confined in a unit cell, it looks like triangle because that's how it's confined in a unit cell. So x, y, z components are all intersects at 1. So therefore, hkl is 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1. So 1, 1, 1 is my plane. If I was to draw 1, 1, 1 um, vectors, so it's right at that point uh, terminating, starting from the origin. That's the body diagonal, right? And that is perpendicular to my plane. Well, I already uh, mentioned uh, that the planes are in a regular uh, bracket and then a family of planes, on the other hand, are shown in a curly bracket. And the discussion for the family of plane, please refer to the family of directions in the previous lecture slide. It's the same discussion. It has to do with, the, with my pick off XYZ axis orientation. Okay, so let's uh, 
So some examples. Uh, this time we have two different types of examples here. We are given the Miller indices and the um, plane is asked and we are given uh, planes here and Miller indices for those planes are asked. Let's do it. I'm going to pick random two examples, the most difficult looking ones. I think this one looks pretty difficult and one bar two, three bar and also one three bar one looks pretty difficult right among all of them let's try to do uh, one by one let's do g first g the hkl uh, miller indices are given what are hkls minus one two minus three so going back to the uh, intersection points what do i have to do I have to take the reciprocal of these indices to find the intersection points with x, y, and z. What is it then? x, y, z's. 1 over minus 1, 1 over 2, 1 over minus 3, making that 1 minus 1, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 3. So it's got to be in negative x, negative z, and positive y um, frame. So, in other words, if this is my x, this is y, this is z, this is negative x, negative y, and negative z, these uh, intersections should be in the negative x, um, negative z, and positive y. In other words, I am in this frame, in this, if my unit cell should be right here in this quadrant what are the intersection points my first intersection point is negative 1 x which is this what is my second intersection point it's positive 1 over 2 y it's this and what about the third intersection point with z negative 1 over 3 it's this all i have to do is i connect the dots so this specific plane here, this pink plane, is my minus 1, 1 over 2, minus 1 over 3 intersections given, let me write them down, minus 1, minus 1 over 3, and 1 over 2, uh, is actually 1 bar, 2, 3 bar plane. So what about the other way around? Uh, I think it's pretty uh, straightforward. This time I'll be uh, finding the Miller indices for A plane, for example. Which one is the A plane? A plane is the plane here shown. Hold on. This plane here. First of all, um, Let's find the intersection points for A plane, X, Y, and Z, what are they? Well, it is definitely intersecting with X at 1 over 2. It's parallel to Y, right? So it's infinity is the intersection point. What about Z? It is intersecting with Z 2 over 3. So to find HKL, we do the reciprocal 1 over 1 over 2, 1 over infinity, 1 over 2 over 3. So the HKL values are 2, 0, 3 over 2. But to write the plane, we need to make all integer. So multiply it with 2. 4, 0, 3 is the A plane. This plane is 4, 0, 3. All right, so um, that's pretty much it. I mean, um, uh, finding a, a Miller indices or from the Miller indices, finding the uh, plane uh, works like this. Uh, one other uh, basic cell that we can talk about, which is a hexagonal cell uh, and the planes in it. Um, just like the direction, we can define our um, plane in a primitive cell. The primitive cell we already defined in 
while we're talking about the directions, of course, this uh, 120 degrees basal angle and equal lattice parameters basal length, AA, and C height um, being 90 degrees apart from both basal um, axis is my primitive cell. And I have a mirror plane here that is repeating and ro while it's rotating it's re repeating the cell in the back and I have another mirror uh, face here that does the same thing or this mirror does the same thing while complete completing the rotation of that primitive cell uh, 360 degrees around. So what I mean by defining my plane in a a three axis system is in any any in any of those primitive cells I can define my plane then I can convert that plane uh, from the three axis to four axis but this time it's much easier to convert unlike the uh, directions so uh, if my Miller indices are H K L H being a1 K being a2 L being the C um, then from here I can easily convert that into four axis system as H K I L. So I being equal to negative H plus K. The addition of these two indices and negative of it is the I basically. So if you look at the specific plane here, that plane in between A1 and A3 is indeed intersected with A1 at 1 and it is also intersected with A3 uh, at 1 right so sorry at minus 1 so with A2 A2 is here this is negative A2 so it is intersecting with A2 negative 1 and it's intersecting with A1 at positive 1 so what is my HK and what about L at C, it's also intersecting plus one. Okay. So these are the three axis uh, Miller indices for this specific plane. Let's write it down. It is A1 being plus one, A2 being negative one, one bar, and um, L being one is a um, designation for the C height. It's easy to convert. Just add these two up. 1 plus negative 1 makes 0, right? And put a negative sign in front of it. So, and put it right in here as an I parameter, I in this. So, for the uh, co like converting from 3 axis to 4 axis in case of planes, it's simple. So, it is 1, 1 bar, 0, 1 then, which is equal to negative 1 plus negative 1. We can solve other examples. Uh, for example, uh, for this B plane here, this B plane has a uh, three axis in between A1 and A2, uh, A1, A2, and C. In other words, H, K, L being, uh, sorry, A1, A2, A, C being 1, 1, 1, right? H, K, L being 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 1. Don't forget to do this reciprocation. Otherwise, uh, you might get misled. Okay? So my H, K, L is 1, 1, 1 in 3 axis. So convert that into 4 axis. 1, 1, 2 bar 1. Why? Because this I is equal to 1 plus 1 with the negative sign. The same thing for this A. What about for A? Uh, what are the uh, uh, in indices for three axes? Uh, first of all, let's find the intersections with A1, A2, and C. It does not intersect with A1 unless it's an infinity. infinity. They're parallel with A1 and A2, right? This uh, specific plane you're seeing here. And C axis intersected at 1. So conversion to HKL is 1 over infinity, 1 over infinity, 1 over 1, so it is 0, 0, 1 in 3-axis um, uh, notation. 
How do I convert it to four axes? It's zero, 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 one this time. Why? Because this zero, again, I is equal to negative zero plus zero. Okay, so it is that simple. So um, if you look at the um, directions and planes um, in the unit cells, uh, specifically for BCC, simple cubic FCC, then we have to position our atoms in the cell. Uh, for a couple of slides back, for a cubic system such as uh, shown here for a cube, I was able to identify planes or Miller indices of those planes, but I have not placed any atoms yet. Uh, I know for the same cube geometry, I can have a body centered, face centered, or simple cube arrangements. We've seen that already. So the same uh, plane that I identified in that unit cell can have different atomic configurations on it. So that's what we're going to investigate now. Um, let's take a look at uh, the FCC unit cell and 110 and 110 direction and a plane. I know the same Miller indices direction and planes are perpendicular to each other. In the previous lecture, uh, part two, we already seen how to draw that um, vector, which is that one, one, zero, if this is my um, x, y, and z um, axis. Similarly, if this is x, y, z axis, right? I learned in the previous uh, lecture uh, how to draw one, one, zero vector. And since this is face centered cubic cell, and if I look up the vectors, uh, we did that linear density and linear packing factor for the 110 um, vector. Uh, in that case, I had one half, right? One half, uh, one uh, whole, and one another half atom uh, was centered in that direction. In the case of, but, but we looked at it as a length, by the way. We don't see how wide it is. R length, two R length, R length. So half atom, full atom, half atom. And that's how we count the number of atoms while calculating the density. In the case of a plane, on the other hand, we have to look at the uh, surface area of atoms, like the cross section. We're looking at the cross section of that sphere, which is a circle. What percent of the uh, circle instead of a length of an atom, a cross-section of an atom, what percent of that pi r square circle is centered in my uh, plane? That's what we're going to investigate. But let's first try to imagine and first draw the plane and imagine the atomic configuration for 110 FCC unit cell. If my uh, 110 unit uh, uh, plane is the Miller indices, then HKL being 110, right? 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 0 being the XYZ, uh, which is 1, 1 infinity. Then it's got a, my plane got to intersect with X and Y, and it's got to be parallel to Z, which exactly gives me this plane here, right? This is the plane I will be treating. So within that plane, if I take that plane and if I blow it up to the right hand side here, just like you see it here, this is how the atomic configuration looks like. On that plane, in the, a plane is made up of two vectors indeed. If I combine a vector and this vector on this side, or this vector and this, it is surrounded by vectors, right? So it's a two-dimensional quantity and area made up of two one-dimensional um, quantities. So right here, we already seen this is a vector, uh, which is a 0, 0, 1 vector. And along that vector, I know while I'm traveling, I have two atomic cores with R lengths. But in between those R lengths, there is a gap. Therefore, I'm just, I'm just writing the R length and the gap. And the height of it is A. I'm going toward the 110 direction this time. 
What does the 110 direction looks like? It's exactly like this. There is a R length atom, two R length atom, and another R length atom. So there's four R length at A squared of two total length, and those atoms, one come after another. So the same story is here, R length, gap R length, and R to R, R. There you go. You don't really have to memorize or just uh, visualize all of a sudden what's on the plane. Just follow through the surrounding uh, vectors uh, and designate the lengths and gaps. Then you realize the big picture, the, what is the um, atomic configuration on a given plane. We'll do a lot of examples uh, in the upcoming slides while we're defining the uh, 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 aerial density and aerial packing factor this time. Uh, but let's take a look at the, the same plane, 110 plane, in BCC cell this time. In BCC cell, instead of having face atoms, I have a one central atom right in the center of the cube. And this plane passes through the center of the uh, unit cell. So it's cutting through that central atom. Therefore, I know right in the center, I have an atom. What else is there? In the corners, I have R length atoms position themselves. So if you look at the FCC cell, the cross section, that same plane looks like this, 110 plane. If instead of having FCC, if I was having BCC unit cell, my 110 planes would look like this the atomic configuration. So just like what we've done in the uh, linear uh, one dimensional uh, quantity uh, vectors, along that vector we define the linear density and the linear packing factor, we can do the same thing for the um, planar density and planar packing factor. What is a planar density? We already figured out what is my 110 planes for FCC, right? This, this is for FCC. And we already figured out what does that FCC 110 plane looks like, right? And we can figure out how many uh, areas like how many atoms are actually covering the area of that um, plane. To do that, I'm this time uh, looking at the surface area of atoms. For example, here on this corner, I have one quarter of an area uh, of an atom exist. In each corner, I have a quarter of an area of an atom exist. So 1 over 4 area times 4 corners, that makes up for 1 atom, right? I'm not talking about length now. Now I'm talking about two-dimensional area. What percent of that plane area is covered by atoms? First, in the planar density, I'm not going to find the percentage. I'm going to find the, the number of atoms per area. And in the planar packing factor, I'm going to find percentage. If it's a factor, it's unitless. It is a planar density or linear density. It is atoms per uh, length or area and so on. So one atom in the corners. And there is half atom and half atom. Two times half atoms, which makes one atom, edges. So how many atoms do I have for 110 plane in FCC? Two. So two atoms over the area of plane. What is the area of the plane? One side being A, the other side being the face diagonal A squared of 2, right? So what is the area? A times A squared of 2. So planar density is indeed for 110 two atoms over a squared or squared of two. But I know uh, from my um, very first uh, part of this lecture series, for FCC, a being equal to two squared of two, um, 
uh, yeah, 2 squared of 2, r, right? If I take the uh, square of it, um, what is that? 2, 2, 2, 8, right? That gives 2 over 8 squared of 2, r squared. And that is equal to 1 over 4 r, uh, squared of 2, r squared. It's that simple. Just the number of atoms based on the area, I can calculate how many atoms out there for a given plane and divide that into the total area of the specific plane that we're investigating. That gives me how many atoms per nanometer square or whatsoever as a planar density. But if I want to find a unit place number, a percentage or fraction, what fraction of that area is covered by atoms, all I have to do is multiply my planar density with the atomic area, which is pi r square, right? Planar density times the, the area of the atoms is pi r square. Now let's uh, see the planar density in planar packing factor for different uh, planes uh, in simple cube, body-centered and face-centered cube comparatively. Let's start with 0, zero 001 uh, plane. Uh, first of all, let's identify that plane. 0, zero 001 plane is the HKL indices as given 0, zero 001. And translation that into the intersections is 1 over 0, 1 over 0, 1 over 1. So it is infinity, infinity 1. So it is the plane that's parallel to XY plane and intersecting with the uh, Z right on the top right here this is my plane right so for different geometries here i can identify that plane as this plane this plane and this top plane as well what is the area of that plane the area of that plane is a square why because that is uh, surrounded with uh, a a parameters in both sides so now we're going to fill out that uh, 001 plane atomic configuration for three different cubic geometries. For simple cube, it's obvious we have four atoms in the corners of that uh, plane and that are, they are touching each other right in the center, right? That's the... atoms centered in the corner are touching each other. For BCC, I have again atoms touching in the corners, but they're not touching each other in the edges because there is a one big atom in the cube center preventing them to touch each other because all atoms are actually touching the central atom, right? Therefore, that plane only sees that corner atoms, but not touching each other those corner atoms, right? What about FCC? FCC, on the other hand, as the name implies, face-centered cubic cell. I have a one huge atom in the center, and the corner atoms are touching it. So, that's the projection of each plane, the atomic configuration of each, uh, the same plane, atomic configuration, different crystal structures. They're all 0, 0, 001 planes with different atomic configurations. Let's calculate the planar density. The planar density for simple cube for 0, 0, 001 plane is the number of atoms. How many atoms do I have? I have quarter, 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 quarter. So four quarter atoms making up one atom, right? Area wise. So there's one atom over a square is the area. What is A is equal to? 2R in simple cube. So, 1 over 4R square is my planar density. What about that for simple cube? Sorry, body centered cube. Again, I have 4 atoms in the corners. A quarter of them is confined in the um, plane. So, how many atoms do I have? 1 atom over the area. But this time, my area is equal to? 4r squared over squared of 3, so that is uh, 3 
sorry, um, 3 over uh, 16 R square is my uh, planar density. Planar density for 100 FCC. This time I have one full atom in the center and the corner atoms are making up one extra atom. Two atoms are conf is confined in the FCC 100 or 001 plane as an atomic configuration. And A square being equal to 2 over 8 R square. Why? Because my A is equal to 2 squared of 2. And that is equal to 1 over 4 R square. So what is the planar packing factor? Since this is a area, like a area of an atom, two-dimensional uh, view I'm looking at, uh, I'm going to multiply the number of atoms with the area of the atom. What is the uh, area of an atom cross-section? It is the um, cross-sectional area of the atom, right? So um, that cross-sectional area is pi r squared, simple circle, right? So if I multiply planar density 1 over 4 r squared with pi r squared, that gives me, r's cancels out, that gives me pi over 4, which is equal to 0 0.785. The same story is for FCC, why FCC has the same 1 over 4 r squared ratio, right? 1 over 4 r squared is the planar density for both. And for the BCC, it's 3 over 16 R square. So planar packing factor for 1, 0 is also equal to 0 0.785. Let's write them down. So almost 80% of that plane is occupied by atoms in terms of area. If I look at the planar packing factor for the same plane but BCC configuration, if I multiply the planar density with pi r square, this time I only get 59% almost, 0 0.589. Oh, that's that simple. Let's take a look at other geometries. This time 110 plane. Again, I'm going to write down the HKL uh, 110. And if I divide into 1 over 1, 1 over 1, 1 over 0, x, y, z, intersections are 1, 1, infinity. So if this is my um, x, y, z dimensions, my plane is intersecting with x at 1, intersecting with y at 1, and it's parallel to z. It is this plane. We already seen how to uh, find this specific plane from the Miller indices. Translation of that image, that plane, and then we blow it up, one side being equal to A, right? This is A. And one side being the face diagonal is A squared of 2, right? So I already put those dimensions here. That's my plane. Well, geometrically, that's my plane. But if I place my atoms in that cube, in simple cube, body-centered or face-centered cube arrangements, that plane will have different atomic configurations. Let's take a look. If I look from the uh, one lattice parameter, uh, this side, I know my atoms are touching each other. If I look at the face diagonal, my that same corner atom that is actually is not in touch with the other corner atom. It's obvious because atoms have a certain R um, length. If they're touching in a side with a length A, they wouldn't touch each other at a side larger than A, right? A squared of 2. So they are separated from each other. So this is how my cross-section looks like. What about my configuration in the case of BCC? We already done that, remember. Um, I think, yeah, here. This is where we discussed how my 110 planes looks like in FCC and BCC structures. Of course, in the corners, they're not touching because right in the center is the body-centered atom. It is occupying the center of that um, uh, 
uh, plane, 110 plane, and I have corner atoms, obviously, not touching each other, but the central atom there. In the case of um, FCC, uh, we have, again, I remember I was giving you, uh, going along the vectoral uh, dimensions, uh, between these uh, two atoms, they're not touching each other, but on the face diagonal, I have, as the name implies, it's a face-centered cubic cell. So on the face center, I have a whole atom, but the only half of it is in the plane. And I have also corner atoms, and the same story at the bottom uh, face diagonal. So if you translate those to this discussion, let's remember, in this plane, specific 110 plane, For BCC and FCC, this is the cross section, how it looks like. Right in the center, I have an atom. The corner atoms are touching to it in the BCC. For 110. And for FCC, I have a central face atom, both at the top and bottom, because this is my face diagonal, remember, and I have corner atoms. Let's calculate the planar density. Planar density for 110 in the case of simple cube, how many atoms do I have? Corner atoms making up one atom. What is the area? A squared squared of 2. But this time, my a squared is equal to 2r, so 1 over 4 squared of 2r squared. And the planar density for BCC 110, central atom, one atom, and then the corner atoms, extra one atom, two atoms, right? What is the area? a squared, squared of 2. What is a? a is equal to 4r over squared of 3. So it is equal to um, 16 r squared squared of 2, 3. And that is equal to 3 over 8 squared of 2 r squared. The planar density for FCC, on the other hand, I have half, half here making up one atom. And corner atoms, I also have two atoms in the case of a uh, 110 planes of FCC. What is an A square? 2 squared of 2 R square R and that is equal to, sorry, uh, or square root, sorry. This is A square squared of 2 and that gives me um, 8, 4. 1 over 4 squared of 2 r squared. Okay, let's write them down. 1 over a squared, sorry, 1 over 4 squared of 2 r squared, 3 over 8 squared of 2 r squared, 1 over 4 squared of 2 r squared. Planar packing factor is the multiplication of the planar density with the area, cross sectional area. And if we do that, 1 over 4 squared of 2 r squared pi r squared, that gives me 0 0.55, so 0 0.555. And interestingly, my um, FCC also have the same ratio, which is 1 over 4 squared of 2 r squared pi r squared, that is equal to 0 0.555. And if you do the same for planar packing factor for BCC, 3 over 8 squared of 2 r squared times pi r squared gives, gives me 0 0.833. Well, uh, we can do the same exact calculations this time uh, for 111 planes. 
For the 111 planes, what is the 111 plane? It is the plane with HKL values 111 and reciprocal of them XYZ are also intersecting at 111. If this is my X, this is my Y, and this is my Z. Uh, hold on. This is Y, Z. Then my plane is exactly this plane intersecting at 1, 1, 1. So it's not hard to see my uh, sides are the face diagonals. Therefore, my side lengths are a squared of 2 for all of them. The area is the actually... Uh, we can draw a squared of 2, a squared of 2, a squared of 2 triangle. And if you multiply the height with the basal uh, height and divide into 2, this is what we obtain as an area. Okay? So let's uh, place our atoms centered in that specific uh, 1, 1, 1 plane. For the, uh, for the uh, simple cube, I'm actually surrounded with these same exact vectors as a face diagonal, right? What is the atomic configuration in face diagonals? There are atoms not touching each other, centered in the corners. But what is the degree here? Degree is 60 degrees, right? It's an equilateral triangle. What about for the BCC? A lot of people sometimes do that mistake. Indeed, when I draw that uh, one, one, one plane, the central atom is not centered in that plane because the central atom was it is a little tilted, right? The central atom in the BCC was centered in the 110 plane. There is an angle difference between 111 and 110. Why? Because 110 is parallel to z axis, 111 has a component there. This has a certain angular tilt. That's why the BCC central atom does not belong to 111 plane. So whatever is centered is no different than the simple cube. It is indeed. Um, those central um, those atoms on the corners are the only ones centered in that 111 plane at 4 BCC. No other centered atom. For FCC on the other hand, the story is a little different. Um, since we're talking about the face diagonal, it's not hard to see Yes, I have corner atoms, but in between those corner atoms, there is continuum. There's continuum of half an atom, half an atom, and half an atom. All sides of that triangle being the face diagonal. And the face diagonal have continuum of atoms, corner, half, corner, right? Let's calculate the planar density. So number of atoms in this case, um, there are three atoms, uh, but 60 degrees. 60 degrees slice is the, over 360 degrees, one over six of an atom, each one of them. How many one over six of an atom do I have? Three. So how many atoms do I have in both cases? Half. So, planar density for both will be half an atom over the area being a square, squared of 3 over 2, 1 over half an atom, a squared, 3 squared of 3 over 2, but, but, a being equal to 2r for simple cube, uh, making up 1 over 2, 2r square, squared of 3 over 2, and that gives me 
1 over 4 squared of 3 r squared. And in the case of uh, BCC, 1 over 2, uh, 4 r over squared of 3 squared, squared of 3 over 2, and this gives me 3 over 16 r squared. In the case of um, uh, HCC 111 uh, plane, how many atoms do I have? Let's calculate that first. I have uh, half, half, half atoms on the edges. So there is one and a half atom, right? Half, half makes one atom. One other half, one and a half atom. And the corners, just like BCC or simple cube, another half atom. So there are two atoms. If I calculate the planar density for 111 in FCC, it is two atoms over um, a, squ a squared, squared of 3 over 2. What is my a is equal to? 2 squared of 2r. And if I do that, 2 squared of 2r squared, squared of 3 over 2, my planar density is equal to 1 over 2 squared of 3 r squared. Let's write them down. 1 over 4 squared of 3 r squared. 3 over 16 r squared. And 1 over 2 squared of 3 r squared. All we have to do to find the planar packing factor, I multiply with pi r squared, planar packing factor for simple cute, cube, pi r squared over 4 squared of 3 r squared is equal to 0 0.453. In the case of a BCC planar packing factor, pi r squared, 3 pi r squared over 16 r squared is equal to 0 0.589. A little more packed compared to simple cube. And in the case of FCC, this is equal to one of, uh, pi r squared over 2 squared of 3 r squared. 0 0.907 is the value. As you can see, the most dense packed plane among 001, this is an FCC. So let me talk about the entire planar spacing uh, after talking about planar density and planar packing factor. This is also an important phenomenon. Um, the distance between the planes can be measured by the um, vectors in between them. So if I want to know the dis dif distance between 0, 1, 0 and 0, 1, 0 planes as seen here, I can put a vector in between and the, the length of that vector gives me the entire planar spacing and for cubic cells cubic lattices that distance between any hkl uh, indices planes can be measured as the lattice parameter a over the square root of uh, each miller indices individual square well, I can explain where does that coming from, where is that um, coming from, that's cubic lattice uh, dhcal being equal to this. Let's see the proof of it. Uh, to prove that, I'm going to draw a cube to this corner here. And with y, x, and z parameters okay. not the perfect uh, cube but still would do the job I believe so if I draw a arbitrary plane here and intersecting with the half of these uh, x y z directions this plane 
if these are the 1 over 2, 1 over 2, 1 over 2, is 2, 2, 2 plane, right? Intersections being 1 over 2, 1 over 2. So this plane is 2, 2, 2 plane. If I draw a vector perpendicular to it, a 2, 2, 2 vector, or just the vector perpendicular to it, I can, this is perpendicular to the plane, right? If I somehow find a, a draw a, a length from this corner on that plane, the angle in between these two vectors should be 90 degrees, right? Because I specifically draw a vector with the same indices, um, HKL indices, vector perpendicular to it. If I call this an origin point O, if I call this point A, if I call the intersection with Y B, if I call intersection with Z C. Let's draw the specific geometries here. If I want to, and let's call this uh, center as P. Okay. If I draw O P A um, uh, triangle. O to P is my uh, vector that is perpendicular to it, and that's the distance between the HKL, that's the distance between the planes. That's what I want to measure, right? That vector's length. What about O to A? If my parameter, lattice parameter along X is A, if my lattice parameter along Y is B, and if my lattice parameter along C is Z is C, then my O to A is indeed A uh, specifically to this point is A over H. Why? Because it's exactly the half of it and I take the reciprocal of the intersection H being equal to 2. So H being, since it's reciprocated uh, from the intersection, and if I take it to the denominator, I find the length, so which is A over 2, right, in this case. So A over H is my length, O to A. And if I define an alpha uh, here, my cosine alpha will be equal to DHKL over A over H, and that will be equal to h over a dhkl. If I do the same exact thing for between the for the same uh, triangle, another triangle between O P B triangle. For the O P B triangle, the same story goes. I have perpendicular in between O P and P, uh, P B. Sorry. OP is the length DHKL, the distance between the planes I want to find. What about the point B? This time point OB length is the B parameter for the Y direction over the K in this for that Y direction. So what about the beta, cosine beta, that um, I chose as a Greek letter for that uh, angle is going to be equal to um, k over b dhkl this time. So if I do the same thing for c and if I draw the o, p and c triangle this time OP again is my DHKL. OC is equal to um, C over L this time. And if I designate another um, angle, cosine gamma, cosine gamma is equal to um, L over C DHKL. So let me put them 
in, sorry. Squares. I also know, um, that's another fact, my cosine square alpha, cosine square beta, and cosine square gamma should be equal to 1 from the directions of cosines, sum of squares, being equal to 1. So if I plug in uh, my equations into this uh, fact, I obtain h square over a square dhkl square plus k square over b square dhkl. Hold on, let me write down this way. It's much better. In the common multiplication factor of dhkl square, a square over a square k square over b square, l square over c square. It's much better expression, okay? This is a general formula to find any dhkl based on my Miller indices and unit cell parameters. If, for example, I have uh, orthorhombic or tetragonal structure, if a, b, c's are different from each other, then I can use this general formula. But in the case of uh, for a cube, I have A is being equal to B is equal to C. So everything gets much easier. Uh, D square HKL, uh, A square K square L square over, if all equal to each other, A square is being equal to 1. Then my D HKL is equal to A over, in the square root, A square K square L square. Well, this is where my uh, interplanar spacing equation is coming from. This equation we will be utilizing a lot uh, in X-ray. So while we're solving the problems with X-ray, specifically this is used for cube for all A, B, C parameters being equal to each other, okay? So in that case, for the distance between the 0, 1, 0 planes, what is the distance? Obviously, if you look at here, it's 1, right? It's got to be a 1A, whatever the lattice parameter, the distance between them should be equal to A. Let's cross-check. From the equation I found from previous page, A over... HKL being 0, 1, 0 for 0 square, 1 square, and 0 square. And that gives me A. On the other hand, if I want to know the distance between 0 to 0 in cubic lattice, 0 to 0 is exactly the half plane, a superset of planes as compared to 0, 1, zeros. Larger the lattice parameter or the larger the Miller indices, uh, more closer the planes are packed one after another. Why? Because if this is my HKL value 0 to 0, what is my intersection going to be? 1 over 0, 1 over 2, 1 over 0. So it intersects in a Y at 1 over 2. 0 to zeros intersects at 1 over 2, 0, 1, zeros at 1. So half is half the side, half the distance of 0, 1, 0 planes. So here, as you can see, uh, 0, 2, 0 planes are uh, half the distance apart of the 0, 1, 0 planes. And if I cross check again with the equation I'm using here, uh, this time a over 0 squared, 2 square, 0 square, and it comes out as a over 2 as expected. Okay? So let's solve one final example and then I'm going to move on to the uh, next section, uh, part 3, for and the last part, uh, last discussions 
on um, crystallographic uh, um, materials, crystal structures, uh, in terms of uh, polymorphic transformations, interstitial sites, or ionic solids. But let's wrap up this part three, uh, where we're discussing the crystallographic planes. Let's all find one final example. This is from your book. The accompanying figure shows the atomic packing scheme for several different crystallographic directions. For a hypothetical metal, for each direction, the circles represent only the atoms contained within a unit cell. The circles are reduced from their actual size. Well, I am given certain uh, atomic separations, uh, centers, uh, at certain um, uh, directions. And I want, they want me to um, construct a cell and name the cell. Why? To what crystal system does the unit cell belong to? What would this crystal structure be? Let's start solving it. First of all, I like to place my X, Y, Z coordinate system. In that X, Y, Z coordinate system, for 1, 0, 0 and for 0, 1, 0 um, directions. Where is the 0, 1, 0, 0 direction? It is here, right? What about 0, 1, 0? It is here. The length of it is given as 0.4 nanometer in both 1, 0, 0 and 0, 1, 0. What else do I know? I'm also given atoms centered 0.4 nanometers apart. The lattice points are given, right? Okay, the second uh, geometry, that's uh, the another atomic configuration is given for 0, 0, 1 this time. What is 0, 0, 1? 0, 0, 1 is this vector. But this vector is given as this time 0.5 nanometers. It is longer than 0.4, right? It's a little longer. Let's say this. And it also has another lattice point at the end of it. So this is 4001. Another direction is given 011 and 101. What is 101? 1, 0 is y, so it is actually this 101. What about 011? I have no x um, component, but it is this. On the yz plane and on the xz plane, two vectors. What is the configuration of it? It has, of course, one central and one at the end lattice points for the atomic configuration. What is the length of it? Point, sorry, point 0.64 nanometer. One last configuration is given for 110. I know which one is 110. I know my 110 is this. But that uh, is 0.566 nanometer. And atomic configuration is one central and one in the end. So if I was to place my um, XYZ orientation, that's... Um, Tri, uh, tri x here um, instead of this corner to this corner and the same configuration would still be valid or for the other corner from here i can easily deduce and see uh, let me draw first i have a face central structure so the same exact story is valid for the other half of that cube. Okay, I'm going to have central atoms here. 
and a corner end. Therefore, this structure, uh, for as an answer to the first part, to what crystal system does this unit cell belong to? Of course, it does belong to tetragonal system, right? Why? Because A is equal to B, they're all equal to A, and I have a C parameter different, tetragonal system. Okay, if it is, and they're all 90 degrees apart. Um, what would this crystal structure be called? If it was a cubic system, this would be called a face-centered cubic cell, right? But this time it is face-centered, not cubic, tetragonal cell. That concludes our um, crystallographic uh, planes uh, section. Um, in the upcoming uh, part of this lecture series, I'll be talking about slip systems, polymorphic transformations, crystal structures of an ionic solid, just a little bit left. Uh, if you would like to join uh, me in the next uh, part of this lecture series, you're more than welcome to. Uh, thanks for your time.